All right, so I have the new panels. These are the new ones that they cut. These are the ones that they cut previously. You can see the difference in the corner. And I have a pump it up uh, panel. These are, these are built the exact same way as ITG panels. And uh, these are, this is a DDR panel. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, really the only thing I have to do to these panels, uh, besides putting a, uh, a film on there, a, like more permanent than this stuff that comes off, um, what I have to do is to bevel this edge. So right now this edge is very sharp. It's like a complete 90 degree. The DDR has a just a minor bevel on both sides. Pump it up in ITG panels, they have a much bigger bevel only on one side. The other side has no bevel at all. But this one has a very big one. So I, I prefer the bevel like this. Um, or uh, actually like a rounded corner, about the same uh, angle, just rounded. And I'm gonna do mine to both sides so that if I decide in the future I wanna flip my panels, I can. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply a window film to the bottom side of the panel to diffuse the light. I got this window film from Amazon and I use it on my other pad and it works pretty well. This is a, a white window film. The first time I did this I used like a frosted one and uh, it just didn't really diffuse it the way I was looking for so I really prefer the, the white one. Now these are polycarbonate panels and putting a plastic window film that's designed for glass on a piece of plastic like polycarbonate is really not recommended. The guy at Tap Plastics told me that one of the reasons that it doesn't work very well and it tends to like bubble over time is because the plastics will heat up and cool and shrink and contract at different rates. It seems to work okay on my other pad so I'm, I feel comfortable moving forward with it but a better solution that would really cut this whole step out of here would be to just use a piece of polycarbonate that was frosted on the back from the factory. They do make these um, and there was a piece I was looking at it was acrylic that had a frosted back same thickness and everything and I ordered a sample of it and I looked at it and it just really it reminded me of that frosted window film it didn't really have the same uh, look as the white one so I decided to just go with what I knew worked you know I have the advantage here of being able to flip the panel in the future if I want to but another thing you should keep in mind when it comes to polycarbonate versus acrylic is polycarbonate scratches more easily than acrylic but it's much less likely to break and it's a lot stronger so if you've ever had the problem of a panel cracking or something it is likely that that was acrylic so I, I prefer polycarbonate but it also means that I need to be careful not to scratch my panels by the way, this is a little test that I did of how to apply the window film. The top is actually the film that comes on it from the factory, which uh, you know just kind of comes off over time, so it's not really a permanent solution. The right is uh, it has the window film all the way to the edge, which is what I did on my other pad. The left is I tried to cut a little square that would just sit in that center, which ended up being a little tough to cut and uh, to get the right size. And then the bottom one is just a normal arcade panel. So you can really see how the normal clear panels, I, I think, look a lot cooler with the color than the arcade panels. So I thought this would be a good moment just to stop and just review where I'm at right now. So I just finished up the lights on uh, the lights and the spacers on all of the corners. So last time I had left, right, up, down. Um, had these spacers put in and I put the lights in and uh, I was learning how to put these lights in so the up arrow has them uh, it's a little it's not as nice because I essentially glued the light to the spacers but all of the other ones I did it this other way where I have the light held in with these little clips so I can remove this entire frame and the whole thing comes out 
So if I need to work on it or if I need to swap them out, um, you know, keep in mind, I can actually take this frame out with all of the spacers and the sensor and uh, I can move it over here to this one because they're compatible. So I did that to the, to the corners as well. Uh, the only thing I haven't done in the corners is just put in the sensor. So I just need to put that Velcro strip, uh, put the sensor, and then connect these wires. And then I'll have corner buttons. I'll figure I'll do that later just to, because I wanted to get the lights done first. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about for anyone who's considering building a pad. Um, these are things that I've learned and I think that sometimes they get overlooked. One is that uh, not only adjusting sensitivity and the modding of your panels are important, but also the height of each panel is an important adjustment that I think people overlook a lot. If you're playing and you're extremely steppy and you're used to DDR pads that are like recessed, then, you know, of course that doesn't apply to you. But most people, even people who aren't playing stamina, they usually have some preference for how high they want their panels. And it's usually not the same for every panel. So for instance, in my case, my up arrow is the highest one. It's actually, it'll actually sit above my center panel. My down arrow is probably the closest to uh, flush. And then my left and right are just a little bit below my center panel. And that's what I prefer uh, because of the way my, my feet move. I, I don't wanna uh, trigger the left and right arrow by accident, so they're a little bit lower. So not only knowing what your preferences are, but also having a way of adjusting it if you need to, I think that's really important in, in any pad that you build. In my pad, uh, I have these plastic strips here, and um, I can unscrew the uh, either side of this, and then there's these will come out freely. There's a bunch of different strips, and I can just swap out the strips to get the height to a different level. Now that adjustment is, isn't the easiest thing in the world. I have to unscrew it and kind of like you know, it takes a little bit of time, but it can be done. But then for a more finer adjustment, um, what I've been doing is just cutting these little very thin plastic strips. This is actually a shelf liner for like a drawer. And you'd buy, I bought this at Costco. It comes with a ton of it. It's got a little bit of like a bubble texture or something like that, but it's, it's kind of like a, a thin rubber. And what I do is just cut these little strips and then I just put them on top of the sensor if I want to raise or lower things up. Now, they, it actually would, the friction would hold them in, the, the pressure would hold them in from the panel, but uh, over time, you know, they'll, they'll wiggle out of the way. So the, the only way that I've found to really hold these in place is just to put a little bit of tape um, on the edges, you know, to one of the spacers and just kind of tape it down with masking tape. You know, not, not the most uh, glamorous thing, but it, it does work. And uh, it's really nice because if I need to, I can just pop a panel off, slide in one of these, take one out, that kind of thing. I don't have to worry about unscrewing these and, you know, that's kind of the whole thing. So uh, those are like the two levers that I have. It's these plastic strips, the adjusting the number of them and which thickness they are, and then adding or removing these to get the height perfect. Now, another advantage of this design is that this entire edge, uh, three, three of these faces are the exact same height, uh, all around the rim. So the panel is supported by three edges fully. And then the fourth one has the sensor, which is, you know, probably like a tiny bit higher. Um, but when you squish it down, really four edges of that panel are supported completely. Instead of like a traditional arcade setup where you probably have a, a, an L bracket with some modding on it. And you're probably putting a ton of pressure if you stand on it with your full weight on a very small area. So your panel can flex and bend a lot more than it would with this setup. The name of the game with FSRs, in my opinion, is to just reduce noise. You wanna reduce anything that isn't this very repeatable up and down motion to your panel, uh, right on top of the sensor. That's why you want the sensor as close to where you're going to hit it. That's why you want your panel not to move around. 
And if your panel is flexing and bending, or if it's bouncing or sliding, you know, laterally, all of those things are just going to affect that signal to noise ratio. So think about all those things and how you can mitigate them and how you can just get whatever action is going on on top of the pad to just be a reliable, repeatable up and down on top of the sensor. It does not be perfect, but the more, the more you, uh, effort you put into making it perfect, the better your pad experience will be. All right, so now I'm gonna just mod one of these panels. I have uh, one of these strips and uh, I think I'm just going to go with one for now. And um, that kind of gives me the, the height where I want it. Uh, it's a little bit low, but I can always add more in the future. So I'll just start with one. So now I need to f figure out a way of holding this so it doesn't move. And what I think I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of this painter's tape. And just grab it from each edge. So this is, uh, that's really enough to hold it in place so it's not going to move. Yeah. So now that's just kind of held there. The, the panel is going to press on it, but, you know, we just don't want it to vibrate out of the way. <clears throat> so that's what I've been doing. <clears throat> Another way is just to put this tape on top of the sensor, but, you know, it gets kind of annoying to add it and remove it later. So now here's my panel. This is the underside where the film is. It's got this texture on it. Is the top side, the shiny side. Now, one thing to check is the the lateral movement. So you can see these panels are maybe a tiny bit bigger than normal DDR panels, which is a good thing in my opinion because there's less movement. But we really want to reduce as much of that as possible. Now, I mentioned this way at the beginning, but uh, I leave my inner brackets off. I don't put the um, the corner brackets on, but on the out one, outside ones I do put them. So I put them here and here, and that's enough to keep the panel from coming out, and then my foot can slide here and I don't have to worry about this. You, I, I certainly could route this if I wanted them flush, and then I could put this bracket here and have it sit more flush, but um, then I'd have to countersink this. It, it just it seems unnecessary and a lot of work. A lot of people just don't put the inner brackets in and put the outer ones and it holds it in fine. But if I do this, the panel can still make that little movement side to side because there's really not enough place to grip here for these brackets to hold it in place. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of Gorilla Tape, put it right here on the edge where it's going to touch this bracket and then I'll tighten this down and it's going to squeeze that Gorilla Tape in between the panel and the bracket and it'll lock this in place. Step to the rhythm, move to the rhythm, slide to the rhythm, spin and do it all over again. Sound and feel the rhythm, begin with a simple rhythm, slide to the rhythm, spin and do it all over again. Step to the rhythm. So now this panel's really not going anywhere. And the only place it can move is right here, just going up and down a little bit. It doesn't move side to side anymore, and it won't make any clacking noises um, as it you know, gets pushed to each side or slaps against these. So I really recommend this. Um, it's worked out great for me on the other pads. Ba -ba -ba
second time we've ever played in front of people, man. We're scared shitless. The ultimate aim is to produce sound which is completely acceptable to the listener. Records that give you pleasure. Every day, just...